And welcome back to Keeping It Real. I'm David Grossman. Great to be here again, streaming live from the kiosk on alltalktv.com network. Delighted to introduce you to Jeff Ginsberg. Jeff is an email marketing guru. And if you've been watching our show in recent weeks and months, you'll know that I've been talking about the subject of online marketing, whether it's search engine optimization or email marketing or whatever it is, because let's face it, that is where the world is going. It is, in my opinion, it's going all online. All online. That's where it's all happening. And email marketing is a very big part of that. So, Jeff, I'm delighted to have you with us. Thanks very much for being here. Thank you very much, David. Glad to be here. M my pleasure. So, I was reading this book because, you know, as I mentioned, I'm, I've been consumed with this, with this uh, topic. So, I found this, this book in the bookstore, The Rebel's Guide to Email Marketing. And, and Jeff knows I'm a rebel. Okay, so I picked it. Grow your list. Break the rules and win. So I'm reading this book and then I, I see this information about Jeff Ginsburg and I realized that Jeff had also commented on a video that we had with uh, Roman Bodnerchuk from N5R. You're very complimentary about Roman and, and the work that he does. He's also somebody who's used database marketing, email marketing to grow his business. So I thought, wow, isn't that fantastic? We've got the, the attention of Jeff Ginsburg. So I called up Jeff and we talked a little bit about uh, email marketing, about my email marketing. He gave me some advice, uh, which I appreciate. And, and I thought, we've got to have Jeff on the show. So here he is. And now if you go to, um, to, the web, to Jeff's website, uh, which is um, email, uh, theemailguide.com, you've done an amazing job with this website aggregating information from all kinds of experts. We, tell us about this emailguide.com. What, what is it all about, first of sure. all, please? So, uh, thank you. So, we started the email guide uh, just about three years ago, and uh, there was a huge need in the market. So, uh, the market was made up of many different email service providers, and it was very hard for people to really understand that there were more than just two or three service providers. So if you talk to somebody about email marketing, they'll say, oh, Constant Contact mm. or MailChimp, maybe they know Vertical Response, but really at the end of the day, there were, there were 400 other vendors out there that catered to the industry and helped people with their email marketing. So what we wanted to do was bring together a guide, a directory, uh, all the different vendors, and also provide a voice to the industry. So that is, mm a place where these vendors could come together, talk about their products and services, share their ideas, uh, and promote their businesses. You said constant contact, constant contact might do something about vertical response. What, what does that mean? So there's, uh, there's many different companies, but constant contact is a vendor, mm -hmm. vertical response is oh, a vendor. Oh, that's just another yes, name. I've correct. never even so heard of them. There's 400 different vendors. Right, so, that's, uh, so these guys have really grown um, and uh, and people are using them. It's like so. In, it's third party. So you, I don't know if everybody knows this. I mean, you don't have to s send emails from your desktop. You can go into this software and create very professional looking emails. Yeah. So uh, rule number one is if your list is more than twenty names, mm. you should not send email from your desktop. Don't use Outlook. Don't use your desktop. Uh, don't use you know carbon copy or even better yet blind carbon copy. Go out to uh, Constant Contact or Get Response or Mailchimp or come to our website and have a look. There's over 400 different vendors that will help deliver your message. And the reason why you want to do that is to make sure that your one your email gets delivered. So when you send it from your Rogers account or your Hotmail account, you have no idea whether it got delivered. Two is chances are it'll bounce back mm -hmm. in some situations. And if you send more than 20 messages at a time, uh, you run the risk of more than a single or multiple bounce backs. Uh, and the third one, or really there's many reasons, but the third is these technologies give you the ability to track who received it, who opened it, right. who clicked on what links, and they'll also manage your subscriptions. Sign up, unsubscribe, uh, remove all the people who are bouncing back uh, so that your list stays clean and happy. Now, if people are on your website, they can um, sign up, and this is maybe one of the first things I notice, and this is something I got from reading this book. 
Um, getting people to sign up for your emails. Very, very important question. Um, and you observed how on my website, you know, it's like kind of hidden off to sign up for emails. And people need a reason to sign up. So when you go to your website, people will pretty early on in the, ex in the experience, they will get something that flashes up and says, hey, we can send you a lot of valuable stuff. Yeah. So, you know, click, put in your information and we'll, we'll send it to you. Correct. So that's something that, that's, I don't know if that's uh, somewhere in this list, which we'll get to in just a moment because we, we say we'll, wa we'll walk through some of the things. I'm sure we're not going to get through all 50. So what I'm talking about, by the way, people are um, wondering, so they can also, they, they can sign up for this, this black paper called the Ninja Guide or something like that? Yeah, the, uh, the, the email marketing black paper. Right. Uh, so let's go back a few steps. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, we were approached by our good friend, DJ Waldo. Hey, DJ, got your book on TV. And he said, you know, how did you grow your list? So we had written an article about um, growing our list by over 400%, uh, which is great numbers. Um, it was great numbers in the industry. And really what we did is we took a very simplistic approach. One is we put a web form, a simple subscribe here, give us your email address, and your first name, and we put that on every page of our website, and we also uh, used a technology which is called a light box. Mm. And a light box is a pop-up, right. uh, which comes and displays, ours is set, it's programmed to say, show it to visitors who come to the website every seven days. Um, so if you come to the website, you're gonna see it once, after you surf around for uh, 10 or 15 seconds, but then it won't show it to you again for another seven days. So it'll actually know. It gives you a it, cookie. It, it, okay, so you yep. can see. So that way you don't like over, yep. overkill, right? Correct. Let people enjoy the website a little. Once in yep. a while you offer them this. Sure. Uh, and this you thing. see it on many different sites. So many sites use these uh, light boxes or pop ups for advertising, for promoting events or businesses, or for email subscriptions. And you can, you can serve up different content into these light boxes. But the whole thing is make the subscription in front of their face, make it easy, make it simple, uh, make it so that they really understand the value proposition mm. behind it. Don't ask for a lot of fields of information. We ask for email address and first name. Um, and then uh, beyond that, give a value proposition. Why should I sign up? What am I gonna get? The old what's in it for me. Right. So for our newsletter, you're gonna sign up, you're gonna get deals and tips and news and insight into the industry, uh, along with a, uh, a white paper. We call it a ninja black paper, uh, just to be kitschy and, and tie into Cute. what we do. Yeah. Yep. So sign up, get, a, get tips, deals and news, plus this ninja black paper. Um, and you know, I was thinking about it, about the giveaway. Look, you don't need to give away a Ferrari. Mm. And uh, <laughs> my friend Roman could talk to you about that all day long. And you don't need to give away a condo in downtown Toronto. Um, really, you need to give away uh, a small bit of value, mm. whether it's actual value or perceived value. Uh, it can go a long way. Right, yeah. That's, um, that's very important. Um, that's something I'm uh, s still working on for, uh, for my website. Now, we have this... Um, we have the black paper here on the screen, so we're going to bring it up. We're, you know, there's 50 tips, so this is what this is what you're offering people if they sign up. So I'd encourage people to go and get this because it's a great document. We'll look through we'll look through a few of them. Um, actually, I think we may have. Um, is this the, is this the first is this the first one to you or a taste the soup? Taste the soup is or probably maybe, not. Maybe but we'll just jump in. Another great of, article from Rory Car Carlisle. Taste the soup. Taste the soup. Yeah. So the idea with taste the soup is that people should test their yeah. email marketing for yeah. sure. Right. Testing um, is huge. Different subject lines. You got to test everything. So starting with a subject line to garner an open rate. 
uh, to time of day, to how the mm. content is laid out on the screen, your calls to action, your placement of images, your placement of buttons. Uh, mm. There is no lack of opportunity for testing in this industry. You have some pretty major clients that you've worked with. Can you give us some uh, samples of, because these are not small uh, sure. Mickey Mouse uh, yeah. clients. Well, we've, we started about 14 years ago um, in the industry and we were really the uh, one of the first few in the industry here in Canada, um, but our clients have been everybody from uh, Hudson's Bay, Grand & Toy, Danier, sourced by Circuit right. City. We've worked with Honda, Mazda, BMW. We've worked with the who's who in the agencies world from uh, Arno, uh, Capital C, uh, Cohen and & Wells. Um, and then in the not-for-profit, we've got a very strong background, uh, Heart & Stroke, Sunnybrook Foundation, UNICEF, uh, Hospital for Sick Children, uh, so we've got a very diverse background, and uh, we work really strong in some great verticals. So that's um, so that's taste the soup, and um, we'll we'll just I don't know why we missed the first couple, but we may as well just keep going here. Twitter email tools top ten. Yeah. To, what is this? What is so this? So this about? is an article yeah. about um, this is a great article about top ten uh, tools. Uh, for Twitter and I think if anybody's out there in their email marketing or online have a website Twitter is another social channel that you could add to your mix and uh, these are 10 great tools um, and plugins for your inbox. Okay, so maybe I'm not I mean I I have Twitter but how is Twitter connected to is it connected to e how is it connected to your email? So what am I missing? Uh, that's a great question. <laughs> what are you missing? So in our world, we use Twitter to let people know when there's a new article on our website or we have information. Um, but we will also use Twitter to let them know, hey, subscribe to our newsletter. Hey, okay. our newsletter is about to launch in an hour a day or so. Sign up for our newsletter. Um, we'll let people know when our newsletter is online. Hey, we just launched our newsletter and then we'll give them the link. Okay. So Twitter can be used to promote your newsletter. Right. Um, Twitter be, can be used to field responses and replies from your email audience. And by the same token, you can use one to uh, promote, promote the other. Yeah, so sure. uh, on your, uh, I know one of the recommendations when you have an a, a e-newsletter uh, of some kind is to have your uh, buttons to go to sure. people so they can go from there to sign up for your Twitter and Facebook S and so on. Yeah, so there's two things you can do. One is... Um, within your newsletter, you can promote your social channels, your Twitter link, your Facebook link, your YouTube link, um, but you can also, uh, through email technology, you can then embed uh, Twitter share code or Facebook share code or Dig or Stumble or any of the major social networkings so that uh, people can share your articles through their favorite social channel. Right. Um, now, email marketing wisdom, best of the email snob interviews. Yeah. Um, so Scott Cohen is a uh, is a writer um, who wrote this, and uh, there are a group of people in the industry um, who I would not say are email snobs, but uh, really would um, okay. s set themselves apart. But basically, what uh, Scott has done is he's interviewed uh, what I would classify as some industry insiders, and through this article, he has tied together. Uh, the best of the email snobs interviews. Okay, so these are just like the headers, but people, um, because I went through all 50 of these, sure. but actually each one, I, I assume links to... Links back to an article. To a complete article. That we have published on our website. So, uh, okay, so it's actually um, uh, a ton of tips and information that, that people can get. We have, uh, we have over 3,000 articles on the website that talk about email marketing and um, social media marketing and, and the integration of the two. Uh, and in email marketing, we talk about everything from uh, list hygiene, subject lines, integration, automation, uh, how to get people to subscribe, how to get them to unsubscribe, uh, different testing tactics, and the list goes on. So there's over 3,000 different articles about email marketing. Um, and then from the directory side, we've got over 400 different service providers, everything from email marketing agencies to creative uh, companies who provide creative, copywriters, uh, actual wow. ESPs like the 
constant contacts and the get responses and the lyricists and the exact targets of the world uh, down to um, companies that specialize in landing pages, companies that specialize in optimizing content. Uh, and it's never ending. There's always a new company each and every day. Since you mentioned landing pages, I want to ask you about landing pages. How important is it to have a landing page? So the idea of the landing page is somebody gets an email, they're interested in something, they click to get more information. Is there, is there a rule that you would apply? To, should they be going to a landing page or could they just go to any page on your website? You know, they can go to any page on the website, but the question is how important is that click? So if you're just asking people to click to get them to read, then you can send them to any page. But if you're asking them to click to do an action, mm. such as sign up for your seminar, purchase your product, inquire for more information, then a landing page is huge. Right. And it should be designed properly. It has, should have the proper headline. It should have uh, copy and content that support the headline. It should be um, written out with bullet points. It should have a clear call to action of what you want your subscriber to do. Uh, the the concept of a landing page is you need to answer these three questions. Where am I? What am I supposed to do here? And why should I do it? Okay, gotcha. Now, um, you, mentioned, you also mentioned subject lines, which is something I want to ask you about because, uh, you know, I've heard the conventional wisdom is you shouldn't use all capital letters and that the subject lines are too long. Uh, that's not good, but I've seen a real mix of things done. And even in, in, in the book, uh, DJ Waldo, they're talking about sometimes the subject line was sent in all caps and they got a better response. What are your thoughts on, on subject lines? Hey, DJ, your <laughs> book again. Um, everybody has varying opinions and I will give you the simple answer and that is test. This book talks about breaking the rules and trying different things out. Um, and I think... I think a lot of the thought leaders in the industry are all for that. Look, we all shouldn't be doing the exact same thing. We should be learning from what everybody does and doing a little bit better. So there are some things that I would not put into the subject line. Um, all caps is certainly not one of them, but you know, when people see all caps, all caps they think it's screaming. So. Um, try out different subject lines, try out different lengths. And there's people out there in the industry that say, oh, short subject lines work. And there's other people out there in the industry that say only long subject lines work. And there are people out there in the industry that says, well, we've got research against short lines and long lines and, you know, the industry is split half and half. So um, subject lines are one of those tricky ones. Mm. But at the end of the day, uh, provide a subject line that gives insight to what's in the message, be relevant. Uh, make it intriguing, make people want to open it, um, and and at the end of the day, test it out. Like when you use these third-party mm -hmm. technologies rather than using Outlook, you'll see which message garnered better open rates. And a lot of these technologies actually have testing engines in them. So you can set up a message, you split your lift, list 50-50 or 30-30-30, and you can then test out two or three different subject lines. Well, that's very interesting. I, I, didn't, I didn't know they had that um, capability. Yeah. Um, how to add anyone to a safe sender's list. Yeah, that's really important actually. Um, we're a big proponent of we're a big proponent of getting people on your safe senders list. So what that means is when I send you an email that you are going to add me to either the safe senders list or your contact list in Outlook and or Outlook or Hotmail or Gmail or Yahoo or any of the other 30 different email client softwares and uh, the theory behind that is when when the from address that you're sending from Jeff at the email guide is on your is in your contact list or on your safe senders list, then theoretically that email should automatically show up in the inbox versus the junk folder. Mm -hmm. the, right. the ISPs have now uh, flipped the game once again. So so as much as people might be on your safe senders list, if you're not opening the message and clicking on the links within the message, there is a propensity of those messages to be put in the junk folder mm. until you again re-engage um, and activate those messages. Okay, so that, that reminds me, I just wanted to ask you one more thing about the, the, the subject line. Somebody told me 
an email provider company actually told me that if the subject line is very long, it's likely going to end up in spam. I don't have any research to say so. Right. Okay. Do they? Um, I don't know if they have research. The, the person I was talking to just seemed to be absolutely convinced right. that that was, uh, that was what was going to happen. Yeah. And I'd never heard that before. I mean, I read this book and they never said anything yeah. about that. I don't think there's any research that says subject line length uh, garners inbox or, or promotes inbox placement. So long versus short, no. Uh, what will happen is a long subject line will get trunicated or cut off and a long subject line mm -hmm. will either get blocked out by uh, the length of the window. Right. Well, I know when I get those, uh, I get messages from deal find. Mm -hmm. And to me, it's, um, it's, it's a plus because you can see everything that they're pitching in, in one subject line. So if they have five, six, seven deals, sure. they're all right there. Whereas Groupon, who's yes. similar business, just puts one item. Yeah. So it's interesting that you mention that because uh, I, think, I think Deal Find and some other websites of the world follow along the lines of Google. So if you have a, a Google feed burner account, what happens is when you produce and publish content on your website, the Google Feed Burner account will then um, compile the subject line based on the content. So when we produce five pieces of content, we'll have, um, we'll have email marketing tips plus subject line optimization plus um, how to get your message in the inbox plus, 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 plus. So the concept of providing more than just, hey, look at this great deal, and telling them that within the message is the GI Joe with the Action Kung Fu Grip and the Easy Bake Oven uh, is a little bit more relevant because telling people, hey, we got great deals, big deal. But telling people we have GI Joe and Easy Bake Oven is a little bit more relevant to the people who are interested in those type of products. Okay, I just I want to ask you one more question and then we're going to wrap it up. You've been very generous with your time. I appreciate it. Um, here's something that I think not enough people know about if they haven't been doing e email marketing is this idea of segmenting your list based on user interest. Very powerful marketing tool because you can get finer and finer uh, detail, I guess. You want to tell us what that's all about? Um, yeah, so for everybody, everybody is going to mean something different. So for us, uh, we segment our list for newbies, ninjas, and ESPs. So what that means is we want to know who's brand new at the game, who's been doing it for a while, and who's in the business. But if you're uh, the Toronto Star and you're inviting people to come subscribe to your online version, then uh, the easiest segmentation is news, weather, sports, classifieds. Mm -hmm. So how do you break down your list into information and articles that's relevant to your audience? And it's not a one-size-fits-all model where your content that you put in your newsletter is always going to be relevant to everybody on your list. Right. So there is the ability to segment and uh, drill down into smaller niche groups and uh, the research has shown uh, the more segmented, the greater the lift. Right. And, and the thing that I, I thought was so cool, I'm, I'm a constant contact user and um, based on what people are clicking on. So if people are clicking on this link versus this link, uh, you can sim go in so, it's like one or two clicks to look at who's, everybody has clicked on X, press a button, create a new list for X. Sure. Bam, it's done. Unbelievably yeah. powerful Absolutely. tool, I think. Yeah, so that's a great opportunity to be able to go and drill down and remarket to people who have an interest in a specific mm, product. Right. Um, what would even be better is to be able to go back and remarket to the people who did not respond to it. So can we resend this email with a different subject line mm, or a different right. bit of content or message to everyone who did not open and or clicked? Right. So that, you know, we're all busy. You know, right. we're very busy and there's a lot of messages that all come into our inbox. So chances are you're going to miss some of them. Yeah. Um, so if you're trying to sell this cup, or if you're trying to sell DJ's book, <laughs> then really... I'm not on commission for DJ's book, by the way. I'm not yet either. <laughs> but, um, but the thing is, if you send an email out to say, hey, buy my book, chances are people have missed it from time to time. So you could go back and remarket to them and, and give them a different offer, a different opportunity. 
Um, at the end of the day, a lot of people overlook it. They don't see it. Mm. It's missed. They catch it on the road. Uh, they view it on their mobile device, mm -hmm. and uh, they forget about it in their inbox. That's uh, true. Yeah, yeah, and they may be interested, maybe just need to hit them at a different time. Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, Jeff, uh, again, thank you very much for uh, being with us here today. Again, you've been very generous with your time, and thank you for sharing your expertise with us. Uh, make sure you go out to the website, theemailguide.com, sign up for the uh, Ninja Black Paper. Great uh, piece of information, and the follow-up emails that I've been getting, by the way, are terrific. And uh, if you have email needs, make sure you give Jeff a call because uh, he certainly knows his stuff. You want to build your email campaign. Um, that's all we have for today. Thank you very much for joining us here on Keeping It Real. We will be back soon with another episode. Until then, have a good night and have a good week. I'm David Grossman.